Hi, I'm Tim and thanks for watching this video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at backup options for a Ugreen NAS. And in particular, there's two options that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And what we'll do is we'll go through the backup options on the PC. So I'll show you how to configure the backup options. And then what we'll do after each backup option is we'll discuss the pros and cons of choosing the right backup option. Now, I've seen many videos on YouTube at the moment where they're just showing you how to sync files, for example, sync your pictures from your iPhone or mobile phone, whichever device you're using, and sync them up to the files on the Ugreen NAS, which is not really strictly backup options. So I'm doing this video, hopefully to give you a better understanding of how you can actually back up the whole NAS to another NAS or another device. So we'll get started. So here we are at the desktop and I've opened up a web browser and I've logged in to my Ugreen NAS as you'll see here. And also in the second tab, I've also logged into my QNAP NAS. And on the QNAP NAS, for this first backup option, what we're going to be doing is setting up rsync to use for the backup option. So to do this on the QNAP NAS, you need to download from their app store HBS3, which is Hybrid Backup Sync. So once you've done that, you need to open Hybrid Backup Sync and then go to the services option in the menu and then select the rsync server option and make sure that rsync server is enabled, which it already is because I've already enabled it. And then once you've enabled it, you need to put in a username. So a username, for example, in this case is Tim and then create a password. So this is what the Ugreen NAS will be using to connect to the QNAP NAS to back up with. So it will use the username and password stored in here. So once you've applied the username and password and make sure that rsync server is enabled, click apply and then you can close the HBS3 window. Then going back to the Ugreen NAS, to perform backups with the Ugreen NAS, you need to go to the App Center and in the search box, type in backup and you will see that we get a search result of sync and backup. Now, as you can see on the desktop here in the bottom left corner, I've already installed sync and backup. So you'll see that it's got open and not the install icon there. So with the sync and backup option already installed, we need to click on it on the desktop and then in the backup and restore option. So normally what you would do is if you're syncing files between devices, then you would select the sync option, which will also sync devices between Ugreen NAS and other devices. However, a lot of people have already discussed this, so I'm going to be discussing, as I've said in the intro, backup and restore. So select backup and restore, then click on create backup task. Then you will get the new backup task window. And these are various options that you can choose. So you can back up this Ugreen NAS, backup rsync server or backup between storage pools. So if you want to back up this Ugreen NAS, you would leave this selected. So it's selected by default. So this is what we want to do. We're going to be backing up this Ugreen NAS to our QNAP NAS. So with that option selected, select next. Then it will give you the server type to select. It will either be rsync or webdav. Now in this case, as we've already enabled rsync on our QNAP NAS, we'll be selecting rsync. Then in the server address, you need to enter the IP address or the network name for your QNAP NAS. So in this case, I know it's 192.168.1.105. Now the IP address of your QNAP NAS or the other NAS that you're using will be different. So just make sure that you enter the correct IP address for your alternative NAS that you're backing up to. With transmission, encryption you can leave that off if it's already backing up to a local nas on your local network then there's no reason to enable encryption for the port number you can leave that as default which is 873 
and then in the username we're typing in the username and password that we created for our QNAP NAS. So we'll go into our QNAP NAS here, HBS3 and then services and then rsync server and as you'll see we created the username of Tim and then the password. So what we'll do is go back to the Ugreen tab here, type in our username and then the password that I created to connect from the Ugreen NAS to the QNAP NAS. So we'll select confirm and as you can see we've now got new backup task and then it's asking for the source folders. So the source folder is the data stored on our Ugreen NAS. So we'll go into data and then we'll select files to back up. So this is the folder that I want to be backing up from. And then in the destination, so the backup destination here, we'll click in that box and then it will bring up the folders from our QNAP NAS. So what we're going to do is select data and then we're going to select the backups folder where we're going to be backing up the data to. So once you've selected the folder, you will click confirm and then select next. And then you can select the backup plan if you want. So I'll just disable this as I'll do manual backups for this video. And then we can also enable backup version policy. So what this will do is create multi-version differential backup models, which will retain multiple backup versions after enabling version retention policy, the latest backup version will be retained based on the settings. So if you want to retain multiple backups, so different backup versions, so it will back up all of the files at that date, you're doing the backup. And then once you go to another date, it will then do a null for backup with files on that next backup version. So what you're doing is creating multiple backups and you can have multiple backups with the same files in each backup version. So any change between the backup versions will be applied to that new backup file, if that makes sense. So any files, for example, you add or delete from that newer backup version, then they will be included or not be included in that new backup version. But in this case, we're just going to be creating one backup file and then when we create subsequent backups, it will then overwrite. So it will add to or remove the files from that backup. So we've always got one version and it's always the latest backup version. So we'll click next. And then in the task name, it's called backup task one. So we'll leave that as default, which is already in there. And then with backup immediately after creation. So what it will do is once you click confirm, it will create a backup file straight away. So I'll just untick that for this video for the time being and click confirm. Now to backup files, all you need to do is select backup now, which will do. And then you will see it's creating a backup. So I'll just wait a few minutes for this backup to be created and then come back to the video shortly. Now, as you can see, the backup task one is now showing as successful, which means it's actually completed the backup. Now, just to confirm that my Ugreen NAS is not connected to my network app 10 gigabit, so it's not using the 10 gigabit network card connection on my Ugreen NAS. However, the QNAP NAS is actually connected at 10 gigabit. So if your network doesn't have 10 gigabit capable switches or network ports to plug your devices into, then I would suggest taking that into consideration when you're choosing which backup option you want. So what we'll also do now is we'll go onto the QNAP NAS and we'll go into the file station and we'll open up the backups folder here. Now the backup folder is the backup task one here and it's a dot ubk file which means it's a ugreen backup file now this file as far as i'm aware can only be opened on a ugreen nas so if we try and open this folder you'll see that there's various files in there and various folders so if we go into for example data and then you'll see there's multiple subfolders now i've only backed up two files 
So if we go into, for example, one of these folders, so 1F, you'll see that there's no data in there at all. So it seems to me as though Windows PCs, which I've tried already, cannot read this backup file. And it also seems that the QNAP NAS cannot read this backup file. So it seems to me as if the backup files with the .ubk extension here can only be read on a Ugreen NAS, which of course, if for example, your Ugreen NAS fails with a hardware problem, for example, and you need to get to the data on the backup, then this maybe isn't the right backup option to choose as you wouldn't be able to, for example, put in the hard drive from your Ugreen NAS into say a PC or a Mac and be able to read the backup files from there. So that's something to consider when using this backup option. However, if you have two Ugreen NASes, then that's fine. So you're using, for example, a main Ugreen NAS, and then also for the backup option, you're using another Ugreen NAS. So two Ugreen NASes, then this might be the option to choose as you would be able to read the files on your backup Ugreen NAS. So that's something just to consider when choosing the backup option. So the other backup option, which I think I'll be using, is backing up to, for example, an external SSD hard drive or a USB flash drive. Now, these will be plugged directly into the Ugreen NAS, which I've already done. So I've plugged in a USB flash drive for this video just for testing purposes, and it's plugged into the front of the Ugreen NAS into the USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which is reportedly to give speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. So this option might be ideal if you don't have 10 gigabit networking available. So the best option I feel in this case is to just plug directly into the USB port, a USB flash drive or a USB hard drive, and then you will get the 10 gigabit port speed from the USB to the device. So in this case, we would set up a different backup option so again, in sync and backup, so sync and backup on the Ugreen NAS, we'll go to backup and restore and click on add. Then for the option, we're going to be selecting, instead of backup this Ugreen NAS, we're going to be selecting backup between storage pools. So select backup between storage pools, select next. Then in the source box, you can click in there and then it will bring up the folders on your Ugreen NAS. So in this case, we'll go to data, and then select files to backup. So we're going to be copying the files to backup folder onto the USB flash drive. Click confirm, and then in the backup destination, click in the box, and you will see we get the Kingston USB flash drive pop up. So we'll select Kingston, click confirm, and then select next. And then what we're going to do is you have two backup options here. Now with the incremental backup, it will create a single version. Files created and modified on the source device will be copied to the backup destination and files deleted from the source remain at the destination after backup. So this might be useful, for example, if you accidentally delete files on your Ugreen NAS and you want to recover them, then they would be included in the incremental backup files. Now with incremental backup files, you need to make sure that you have all of the incremental backups and that you keep them all for this to work properly. So the other option we have is image backup. Now this creates a single file and then every time you do a new backup, it modifies that image backup where the files are added or deleted it will actually update the image backup file. So it will remove any deleted files and then add any newly created files to that image. So it just creates one image backup, which then gets modified each time you do a new backup. So in this case, I'll be selecting image backup and with the plan, we'll delete the plan. So we'll leave that as disabled for this testing purposes. Click next. Then this is called backup task one. So we'll call it backup task two. And then with the option backup immediately after creation, we'll just untick that, click confirm. 
and you'll now see that we've got backup task two. So if we run the backup now by clicking backup now and then wait for the backup to proceed, you'll see we get the progress here. And I can honestly say it's a lot faster than doing it over R-Sync. Now, of course, it will be because, as I've said, the Ugreen NAS is not connected at 10 gigabits to my network. So we just wait for this backup task two to complete. And as you can see, it's at 35%. So I'll be back in a couple of moments when the backup has completed. So as you can see, we've got backup task two and that's now successfully completed. Now, what I've done is invested in a Kingston four terabyte external NVMe SSD drive. Now I will put an Amazon affiliate link in the video description for this if you want to check them out. Now the downside to doing this backup method is that you have to purchase an external NVMe drive or external flash drives. They are an alternative method if you don't have, for example, a second NAS to back up to. Now, of course, a second backup NAS could be around the same price or more. And if you haven't already got hard drives for your second NAS, then you, of course, you'll have to purchase those anyway. So this might be a viable backup option. So what we'll do now is go into files on the Ugreen NAS. And if we go to peripheral and then external storage one, Kingston, and then we've got backup task two. So if we open this folder, and then select data, you'll see that we've got files already in here. Now these files can be opened directly from the flash drive. If you plug your flash drive into say a Windows machine or a Mac machine, then you can access these files directly via that method. So this is the bonus option where if, for example, your Ugreen NAS fails for some reason, and you need to access your files, then all you can do is just plug the SSD drive, the external SSD drive or the external flash drive into another machine and then you'll get straight access to your files. So with the other option, as I said, it encrypts the files so they cannot be read via another machine, only via a Ugreen NAS. So this option I feel is a better alternative as you can easily gain access to your files if you haven't got a second Ugreen NAS available. Or for example, if your Ugreen NAS fails and you're waiting for it to come back for repair and you need to get access to your backup files, then this will be an ideal scenario where you have an external flash drive where you can just plug it into any device and gain access to your files. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to back up files on your Ugreen NAS to another NAS, whether it be a Ugreen NAS, or in this case, in this video, a QNAP NAS, or as an alternative backing up to an external SSD NVMe drive, which I'm going to be using. So this is the method I've previously used and I'll be using going forwards. So hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into different backup methods for your Ugreen NAS and hopefully which options you feel is suitable for your requirements. So thanks for watching this video. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them on this video and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. And I'll be back again soon with more videos. Take care and bye for now.